Well, welcome to a new year and new experiences for a lot of you. Uh, we're going to be learning about expressions, equations, and inequalities. And as you see listed are the essential questions. So these are what I want you to be thinking about because they may show up again sometime or we'll be talking about them and incorporating them into our lessons. How do variables help you model real world situations? How can you use properties of real numbers to simplify algebraic expressions? And how do you solve an equation or inequality? <clears throat> so our first section, we're going to be looking at patterns and expressions. And when you're finished with this lesson, you'll be able to identify and describe patterns. First of all, you have a warm-up, so why don't you pause the video for a moment and get your mathematical brains warmed up, and then come back and check your answers. So how'd you do? Excellent job. The key concepts in this lesson are variable is a symbol, usually a letter, that represents one or more numbers. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that contains numbers and operation symbols. And finally, an algebraic expression is a mathematical phrase that contains one or more variables. So let's look at our first example. We're to describe each pattern using words and then we're to draw the next figure in the pattern. So why don't you pause for a moment and study these patterns before you come back and find your answer. Well, first of all, we notice that the bottom row increases by one square, right? So when we draw the next figure in the pattern, we draw one more square, so we've got five across the bottom, okay? We have one square is added to the right bottom. So here's a picture of what our pattern would do to this figure. Okay, these figures are made with toothpicks, so why don't you pause the video for a moment and study and find out how many toothpicks are located in each figure. Okay, our question is, how many toothpicks are in the 20th figure? We're to use a table of values with a process column to justify your answer. So let me show you what this looks like. In figure one, we're looking at figure one, two, three, and then we want to know some questions. We've got questions about the 20th figure. Well, we have counted one, two, three, four, five toothpicks. And so in figure one, we've got one figure, we've got five toothpicks, so our output is five toothpicks. In figure two, we have two here, each has five toothpicks, so we can say our process is two times five, so we've got a total of ten toothpicks. Next, we have three connected figures, each having five toothpicks. So 3 times 5 is 15, and we can count that. So we can say that our, without drawing all the way to our 20th figure, that we know our process will take our, our figure times 5. We'll get 100 toothpicks. Okay, so what expression describes the number of toothpicks in the nth figure? So what operation are we performing here? And what are we multiplying by each time? So we can say the expression would be 5n, because we're multiplying 5 times whatever the number of our figure is. Okay, example 3. We're to identify a pattern by making a table of the inputs and outputs, and we're to include a process column. Okay, so for A, <clears throat> our input, we've got our input column is 1, 2, 3, 4, and we've got a dot at 5, so let's, we'll go ahead and make one for 5. Same here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our process, we're taking 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It's sort of blown off the screen here. <clears throat> but our output is 1, then it's 2, then it's 3, then it's 4, so if we fill in our input and fill in our output, 
What are we doing to our input to get our output? Well, we're multiplying by 1 each time. So we know 5 times 1 is 5. Over here, we put in our inputs of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our outputs, however, for 1 it's 5, for 2 it's 4, for 3 it's 3, for 4 it's 2, for 5 it's 1. So our outputs are be different. So how do we go from this input to this output? Well, if we don't go 6 minus 1, 6 minus 2, 6 minus 3, each time we'll get our output. And our final example, we're to identify a pattern and find the next three numbers in the pattern. So what do you think? Study A. What's the pattern? What are we doing here each time? Did you say we're multiplying by 2? Excellent job. So then the next three numbers would be 32, 64, and 128. Okay, pause the video again and study this uh, set of numbers. Yes, you're adding 4 each time. So the next three numbers will be 20, 24, and 28. Okay, pause the video again, study C, and tell me what is happening. Identify the pattern. Why we are multiplying by 5. Excellent job. Okay, you're ready to begin the assignment. Good job.